You're listening to the Orange Power Podcast, a product of Oklahoma State Athletics. Here are your hosts, Jessica Mori and the voice of the Cowboys, Dave Hunziker. Well, you're stuck with the old folks first. Well, at least for myself. I'm Dave Hunziker with Oklahoma State head coach Mike Gundy. A little different format here, coach, but let's just start here. What, what have been the highlights so far in the preseason? Well, getting back out there, um, you and I were talking off the air. It's We're, we're somewhat back to normal. Um, obviously, the, the virus is out there, and it's affecting all of us. And good news is uh, 83% or so of our team has been vaccinated. Uh, we do have some players that have pre-existing conditions that can't be. Right. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to get it up to 90. I think numbers allow us to get to 90. So uh, in in the politically correct manner, I'm trying to get these other young men vaccinated um, from the standpoint of, unfortunately, from what I see, if uh, if you're not vaccinated, you're probably going to get the virus. Um, that's just me. Now, there's no science to prove that. I just know what I've seen over the last two months. Um, it's very, 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 very contagious, different than last year. Um, we've had more players essentially internally um, pick it up um, per capita for lack of a better term, than what we had last year other than when a bunch of people got it and we didn't know what it was. Right, right. So uh, we're, we're normal from the standpoint of the way we function, but with that uh, around, that's still a big topic. So we're hoping to get those other young men vaccinated for themselves and for the people they live with and their families. Uh, but we're back at football, uh, which is, is good. Um, we're, uh, we're excited. We've, I feel like that we've practiced uh, – extremely hard um, we're getting a lot of young players reps like you and I talked about last spring because of uh, the virus yeah um, we're getting the young players and the threes are getting the same amount of work as our ones and twos now which my first 15 years of coaching um, we we didn't ever accomplish that and that was a failure on my part as a head coach COVID taught me how to get everybody in the program really quality reps. So we did that last year because of the fear of losing people. And a, and a young player or who would, might be a three, it might be a two real quick. Mm -hmm. Well, we have the same situation now. So we've got a lot of work banked with those guys. And we're still continuing with practicing the younger players that could potentially be a two real quick uh, with just a typical injury in football or the virus or a contact trace. So, you right. know, if you're not vaccinated, you're in the contact trace pattern. Sure. If you're sure. vaccinated, that's a somewhat get-out-of-jail card free from contact tracing. So we need to and we have practiced the younger guys more than ever, which I think has been good for our program. I won't go do, do it any different from here on out. You know, you learn. We've all learned things from last year. Sure, sure. So um, <clears throat> the attitude of the team's really good. The guys are practicing hard. I like where we're at in all three phases. We'll know a lot more in three or four weeks. You know, it is what it is. You know, I don't think they should even have preseason polls. First poll ought to come out October 1, but uh, I agree. talk radio and talk shows and radio guys and people need something to talk about, so we put a poll out, which is fine. But uh, we'll know a lot more where we're at in about a month. And let's stay on the, the theme of working younger players. How much could that spill over into maybe – figuring out new ways to get guys into three or four games and preserve that redshirt. That's relatively new. I know it has to be tricky to try to manage that, but could that impact that to where you've maybe found some new and creative ways to use those guys for three or four games? And, and COVID may dictate some of that, obviously. There's no question about it. We know more about our young players now than we ever have in my 15 years here prior. Uh, can I say, because last year we worked some of it, and this year we've worked a tremendous amount of it. And we only get better at things we do by um, reps. You know, you want, to, you want to get better at shooting free throws? Shoot a bunch of free throws. Um, so our young players are getting reps, making a ton of mistakes, but they're being corrected on video, and we're doing it again the next day. So they're making strides. And uh, I think it's by far the biggest adjustment that we've made in my time as a head coach in that we had a big scrimmage last Sunday, and our young guys slash threes were on the field and they functioned just like the twos did so I think at times me and we underestimate 
what a young man can do if we don't give him a chance. How do we know? Sure. Is there a position group that now you look at and say, we're better off at that position now than I thought we might be? Is there a group that jumps out that way? Of course, you have so many guys back um, on defense, but is there a group that, that you would say, oh, wow, we're, we're well, better off than I thought we'd be? You know, the biggest, the biggest trend would be your offensive linemen because it's such a difficult position to play at a young age. Mm -hmm. And then if you're not in there and you're not getting the work and the speed of the game, you really don't know. And then secondly, it would be quarterback. You can, we can go through all the drill work, all the individual drills, the throws and such, even seven on seven, which we're getting more of that for the younger guys. But if you're not out there in the team with 11 on 11 and a pass rush and the secondary moving and having to think and get the play in and function, it's not the same. So offensive line and quarterback play, in my opinion, would be the two areas on offense that have benefited most from these changes. And then defensively, it would be your secondary because they have to read and, and um, prevent their eyes from being violated on play action passes and such, and then also fit the run. And I think it's really important for them to get these reps as young guys, because it's much different than high school. There's so many different things going on. Defensive line guys get in a gap, the tough part of it, yeah. But so your secondary, your O-line, your quarterbacks are where you're going to benefit the most, in my opinion. How is Spencer Sanders better now than he was a year ago? <clears throat> well, he's another year into it, which you know at that position. You know, we watched um, Josh Fields get better every year. We watched Zach Robinson get better every year. Uh, we watched Whedon when he had the second year. Same thing with Mason, okay? And so Spencer falls in that category. Tim Rattay has been fabulous for him. Um, I like his coaching style, I like his demeanor. I what does like, he do? What makes him well, good? He just coaches. Uh, you, you never hear him. I don't ever hear him on the field. He's a coach and he's a teacher. Not that there's not other ways to skin a cat, for lack of a better term, but I think that I know that not only Spencer, but the quarterbacks have a really good relationship with him. That's a very unique position. Accountability is important, discipline and structure, but also working relationships is important. And he's benefited from Coach Rate because he's had him two years. See, Spencer hadn't really had that. He's right. had rotating quarterbacks, yeah. coaches. Yeah. And when you have a coach and then a coach and then a coach, the compatibility between coach players not been as, as good as what it should be. So those areas have really helped him improve and understand our offense better at this time. You lost some key receivers, obviously. I mean, Dylan Stoner is doing great with the Raiders. Of course, and uh, Tylen Wallace was as good as anybody in America during his career here. So who do you see as if the, the big play guys? Let's just start with that. The, the guys that can make the contested catch, that, that catches that we've been spoiled with in recent years by guys that were really good at it. Well, we know Tay Martin is giving us a chance right now to, to take that spot. He's um, very athletic. He's in really good condition right now, and he's committed himself mentally to being a good football player. Came in last year, didn't, re didn't really understand our culture, the discipline and structure, and then we didn't have him because of COVID. He wasn't in shape. Yeah. Tough to play wide out at our school if you're not in shape. Um, Braden Johnson's back, been here forever. He's a guy that we have to count on. And Brendan Thompson's got experience. It's a guy we need to count on. Um, you've got uh, Green and Bray, our young guys that are rotating in, and JP. Uh, that should get some quality work. Uh, Langston Anderson is the other guy that's been around, uh, been somewhat injury prone throughout his career. He no more than gets started and something happens to him. Um, he's doing well right now, as I knock on wood and hold my breath, that, that uh, because he's not been able to get going and then sustain for uh, a variety of reasons that are just somewhat uncharacteristic. If he can stay healthy and get up and running and going, then he can roll in and help because he can make plays. So that's where we're at with those guys. But the main three that need to uh, give us a chance for big plays are, would be Tay and – and Johnson and Presley. Could this be as good of a defense as you've had, potentially? If we stay healthy. Yeah. Um, we've got enough guys to rotate up front. Um, 
We've got maturity at backer. You know, Malcolm and Devin have both been here 10 years. <laughs> we have, Seems like We it. have some youth behind them, but we're very athletic behind them. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of experience. And then we've got really good safeties. When you talk about guys that have made plays, played in games, very experienced, we've got a good group of safeties. And then, uh, you know, at the corner spot, we've got experience. Um, Jarek and Christian have been around forever. Uh, and then we have young guys behind them, kind of like the wideouts, where they're talented. They just don't have a lot of work. But they're going to have to get in and be able to play some. So defensively, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with where we're at. Uh, I will say that I think that we're fast, which we've talked about this over the last two or three years. That We've increased our speed overall as a defense the last two or three years. That was our plan years ago. I think now that's happening, which is a good thing. Um, special teams wise, we should be really good on special teams. Um, our snapper is uh, capable of playing in the NFL in our period, uh, in our opinion, with Hembro. Um, you have um, Tom and Alex. Mm-hmm. You're punting and kicking. Both those guys are were good at what they did last year. Uh, their experience, they're even better now, just based on experience and their strength development. And we have a number of guys that are young um, that play safety and corner, linebacker, um, cowboy back, wide receiver, running back, that can run and make tackles on special teams. So I've, I've challenged the team and have not been afraid to say that we should be really good on special teams uh, this season. One final question. Because of the COVID seniors, if you will, and guys mm-hmm. getting extra years, and you have a number of those players, as does everybody else. Mm-hmm. For me, I find it a little difficult to really understand exactly how good this team might be because it seems like it's going to be hard to tell how good anyone else is. I mean, do you feel that way that more than any year, perhaps ever, it's going to be a feeling out process? It is, and, you know, it's interesting you bring that up. The super seniors that we're calling these guys, which we have six, are a a tremendous, provide a tremendous advantage for a team for a few reasons. One, they're very experienced. They're very knowledgeable. There is no substitution or no substitute for experience. They're veterans. They're older. We, not, we all know that the male body develops physically up to about 28. Mm-hmm. You know, your best Olympians are 25, 26, 27, 28. Absolutely. Some of them even in the early 30s. Sure. Their bodies are much more developed in the early 20s. So when you have a player that's 24 years old, uh, he's much more developed than a 20-year-old. The, I looked the other day. I, I, I just scanned our schedule because I was just interested in super seniors. Now, I couldn't tell – with Missouri State. I can't tell because they've had so many transfers and right, such. Right, right, right. I don't know where they're at, super seniors. But like Tulsa, I think, has 13. I noticed they had 13 super seniors. And I think somebody told me nine of them are starting. So there that's a huge advantage. There you go. Um, and what you said is exactly right. I think Iowa State has a boatload of them. I think they do. And so when you – because if you just look at some of the guys that we had that thought about coming back, maybe bondage – um, you know, at one point, at one point, Eamon thought about coming back. Um, there's a number of those guys. Stoner actually kind of thought about it. Throw three or four more of those more of those guys back on this team. Now you know our players. So how much? How where would you be if you had Eamon, Stoner, oh. Bundage, uh, uh, um, Cam Murray thought about it? You'd be in a really good spot. See what I'm saying? Oh my gosh! So yes. That's the advantage of the super seniors that the general public doesn't really understand. Teams that have a, a large group of super seniors back, the four guys I just mentioned will give you an example of what it would mean to your team because you're talking about four more starters. Okay, we, we, put, we put 11 on the field or we put 22. I'll give you the 22. We say 22, so we take the percentage of tw- four out of 22. And that's between 20 and 25%. 25% of your team yeah, 20%, are yeah. returning starters. That's what that would be yeah. by just those four guys. So when you look at teams – Uh, And I can't remember all of them, but Tulsa stuck out because they had a mess of them. And Iowa State stuck out. So maybe 35% of their team might be super seniors, starters. Very interesting season coming up. A lot of dynamics. And next up, Jessica Morey, one of the key players for the post. Stay with us. 
It's time for Ask the Coach, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Hey, Coach Gunny, this is Patrick. I was wondering how many animals do you own? Oh, gosh, I can't even count how many. Um, it's going to be in the 40s. I'm going to guess in the 40s when you uh, talk about, you're, you're talking about chickens, peacocks, guineas, turtles, dogs, cats, donkeys, miniature donkeys, horses, cattle, longhorn cattle, uh, alpacas, cats. Can't even remember all of them, but uh, it would be around uh, probably close to the 40s. At og and &E, the energy we deliver is more than electrical. We energize education by supporting schools to help our children reach their potential. So every time you see Big Orange out there working for you, remember we're also working to turn power into empowerment. Because at og and &E, we do more than energize a power grid. At og and &E, we energize life. Hello, sweet babies. Welcome to your new home. You have changed our life, and you may even change the world. And because of you, 2021 is the best year ever. Mercy has helped moms deliver babies for nearly 200 years. To find out how to welcome your baby at Mercy, visit mercy.net slash OSU mom. There are a great many things that can be found on the road. The giant blue whale in central Oklahoma. Musicians in search of that perfect melody. You'll even discover the center of the universe. You'll find stories of lives led, challenges met, and men who raise pigeons. They're all out there waiting to be discovered. All you have to do is follow the road. Phillips 66. Live to the full. I wiped up a mess. Yeah, you... Where is the butt? Never mind, I found it! Welcome back, football fans. We'll see you in the fridge. Welcome back to the Orange Power Podcast, and we have our first student athlete of the podcast joining us. That is fifth-year senior Malcolm Rodriguez. Malcolm, thank you so much for being our first guest here. Yes, I'm excited, you know, glad to be the first guinea pig on the show, <laughs> but I'm excited. So first things first, let's talk about, you know, why you came back for your fifth year here to Oklahoma State. Uh, there's just some things that I talked with my family just about, you know, getting my degree this uh, this fall, so that was big important for me and my family. And then just uh, put more stuff out there on film, you know, just learning, uh, learning some things, critiquing some things. So just, and I wanted to come back for one more year, so why not? Gave me the opportunity. Yeah, exactly. What was it like walking in, you know, for fall camp? Obviously, fall camp can be a little rough. It was good. I mean, they didn't really try to break me down because, you know, I'm kind of an old guy here. So, like, I didn't get majority reps, but like I said, I was teaching the guys, you know, helping guys out. So, uh, they, uh, it was good. It was good, smooth uh, fall. And you guys have a lot of experience back there, the linebacker position in the secondary. Um, you know, what's it like getting to play with these guys that, you know, a lot of them came back for their sixth year too? Yeah, I mean, like I said, you got Pill back there. You got Trey Sterling who came in together. So, just seeing us mature like that, you know, we're we're all uh, jokesters back there. We like to have fun every once in a while because, you know, once you're having fun like that, the chemistry is awesome, you know, when you go into game time. So it's uh, it's good having guys like that. Then you got Brock Martin, guys D-line, you know, everyone's vets out there. So it's just a kind of cool uh, cool atmosphere out there being with the guys. Just act like you're just chilling out on, like, on a weekend, just uh, playing out there together. And you mentioned that you guys have a lot of fun. Who's the funniest guy? You know, I, Pill, Pill, I mean, that dude just talks what's ever on his mind. It's, it's, it's hilarious because, like, he'll start singing in, like, pre-practice. And, like, we're like, dude, like, is this guy, like, locked in and focused? <laughs> and, but, no, he really is. But he just makes everyone's day, like, better and he just uh, cheers everybody up. Yeah, I could see that. He came to our media shoot, you know, and he had his sunglasses on and everything. And he was just having, having a good old time. Yeah, so. he's, he's in his own world. So that's a good thing. So everyone just kind of feeds off that energy. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen him, like, in a bad mood or, like, not smiling. No, he's not, definitely not. <laughs> so um, 
Let's talk a little bit about guys that left. Eamon moved on uh, to the NFL, and we just found out that he made the 53-man roster for the mm -hmm. Chargers mm -hmm. yesterday. How exciting is that for you, knowing that you played with him and kind of came in with him, and you call him, you know, like a big brother? Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I texted him last night, and I told him congrats and all that, and so he reached back out to me. He said, dude, everything you can, throw it out there on the field. He said, your time will come. So just seeing him, you know, succeed and make the roster is a big accomplishment for him and his family. So uh, kudos to him, and uh, I'll have to, you know, keep up with him now. Do you feel like that just kind of gives you more motivation, knowing that he went undrafted and he was able to to come in and do this and make a 53? Oh, of, of sure. Like, you know, you're not going to get drafted. Like, now everyone's going to get drafted. It just depends on how hard you work. And so he's a hard worker, and I've known that since we've been playing by each other. So I just knew, I knew he was going to make the roster because he just puts the time and effort in. Yeah, for sure. So, um, speaking of hard work, when did you join? You joined the wrestling team mm -hmm. not too long ago. You and Brock Martin joined the wrestling team here at Oklahoma State. You wrestled in high school, state champion wrestler. Mm -hmm. um, what went into that decision to join John Smith's squad? It was uh, a little bit of cardio. I wanted to get a little, like, in better shape, you know. It helped a lot, actually. Brock and I talked about it. We're like, you know what? Like, let's just go over there and see what we got. You see if we're, you know, knocked the rest off. So, it was fun. Coach Smith, he's awesome. He was like... At first, I was going. We went over there. I was like, oh, he's probably not gonna work with us that much. But in all reality, like he was like right there by our side, like helping us, like kind of smooth transition in. So it was it was pretty cool getting to know Coach Smith. And I was like, dang, this badass coach right here. So <laughs> so I could see how they're all family over there because he he really is like he really loves to interact with the guys. What workout is harder? Sorry, Coach Glass, but uh, something just about wrestling and just hands-on, it just, just makes you more tiring. So I would definitely go with the wrestling aspect. Did you feel like you, you know, still had it, or were you kind of like, okay, maybe I, I don't have this anymore? No, there were some <laughs> moments where I still had it, and after a while, like, you know, my cardio ran out. I was like, oh, I'm not even in shape like I thought I was. Like, your football shape and wrestling shape is totally different, and Coach G will say the same thing, so – Though after a while, I like kind of wore down. I was like, "Oh my gosh!" It's so de definitely, it was it was tough. <laughs> and did you ever feel like you wanted to stick it out and and try to go through a season, or how would that have worked? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was losing too much weight over there, and then Coach Glass came up to me. He's like, "Hey man, would you want to like you know do football in your career, or wrestling?" <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah, right, I'll stick with the football." <laughs> so trying to just not uh losing that weight and he, you know he was a big fan of that because i got down to like 205 and wow. i was like 220 so I, I lost a lot so he's like what do you want to do so i was like oh, okay i'll come back <laughs> so brock stuck it out a whole nother week so but i left a week early before brock <laughs> and was brock's the same situation yeah he, no well he was good because he was a heavyweight okay i was trying to get down to 97 yeah. so i was like yeah <laughs> so brock was good he could eat all he want but just kind of like but, yeah, Coach Glass gave, gave him the same speech and all that, so it was, it was kind of just time to come back. Yeah. Did you feel like when you were trying to get down to 197, did you feel like it was like in high school when you were trying to cut oh weight? Oh, my and gosh, <laughs> yeah. I thought about like, I couldn't eat nothing. I was eating freaking – out of me a glass of water, a little glass of water, and <laughs> kind of just cleaning up the portions. But, yeah, it, I missed it. It reminded me of uh, good times in high school, but sometimes things are meant to be left alone. <laughs> And you mentioned Brock Martin. You know, you guys have been best friends basically your entire life. You were there for him, you know, when his mom was going through cancer. You mm -hmm. guys both shaved your heads back in 2019. Um, you know, just what what's it like getting to play another year with him here? You know, he's he's got a son now. He's mm -hmm. kind of grown. You know, like what's it like getting to play play with him and and be around for all that? It's awesome, man. You go back to high school days. We go uh, go against each other, and so just to play on the same team, it's like kind of a. Uh, reality like you just dream like you don't dream about this stuff so just kind of just like that and he's just a good friend he's always there for me and I'm always there for him and he knows that and so it's just awesome to play with him and have him by your side and just like I said it makes the chemistry on the field better you know like who's who's behind me who's in front of me so we have that connection on the field that's awesome and uh, we talked a little bit about this before we started recording, but um, you started taking a photography class here yeah. at Oklahoma State. You reached out to me with some camera recommendations. Mm -hmm. I did not have a lot of good answers. Uh, but Appreciate you, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bruce Waterfield had it. He knew. Uh, he knows the answers to those questions. Um, but what's that like? What made you want to get into photography? It's awesome. I mean, obviously, it's for my uh, graduation, but I was like, you know, at first I was a little hesitant. I was like, I don't really know what to do with the camera. And so that's why I kind of reached out to you and asked you, like, what's a good brand? And so you kind of came <laughs> back with me 
and I told you what brand I was going to get. And you're like, oh, that's not But you said Bruce said it was a good one. So I was like, all right, I'll try it out. <laughs> and, like, you know, I'm starting to just learn new things in it, and I, I'm starting to like a little photography. So it's kind of it's kind of a cool class. Yeah, and do you think you'll continue to do that after? I think I think I will. I think, like like LD said, he sold his camera to his sister or something like that, or his little, do- uh, little girl or something like that. He said that, and Logan Simonek was in it. And she sold her camera, so I'm like, you know what? I might keep it and, like, you know, just do some photos or something like that. Yeah, that'd be so other athletes have taken the photography class, yeah, too. Yeah, LD, to LD was in it, and Logan that I know for sure, and Chelsea Alexander. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, all the adcom guys. Is it kind of crazy getting to see, like, you are always having people take pictures of you, so is it kind of crazy that you're the yeah, one? Yeah, kind of a different uh, aspect of things and seeing it, like, on your side of the uh, uh, camera, and I was like, you know what? I, I kind of like this. <laughs> You get all these shots and, you know, you get all these different angles and you see which one works the best. Yeah, it's pretty fun. It, it honestly is. So we went out uh, yesterday in class and we took a picture of the library lawn and he said, get different angles. He said, five favorite photos. So I was, it was hot out. I had a <laughs> black shirt. I was like, so I had my hat backwards. You know, I can't, you can't take a picture with the camera. So I was, I was getting every angle of the library lawn. And the, uh, so it was, it was pretty cool. And the professor liked your photos? I didn't put them in there yet. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sure I'm sure they will. Hopefully they will. <laughs> but I had I had help from some of my classmates, you know, adjusting the ISO and all that. Yeah, so. yeah it takes a lot. Everyone's going to be like, what is he talking about, ISO? <laughs> we know. We, we know. know. We know. Um, yeah, no, that's awesome. That's going to be super fun. I feel like you need to, like, one day when it's, like, a chill practice or, like, bye week, you need mm-hmm. to take some photos. I think practice. I will. He was like, uh, so we have an assignment coming up. It's about, like, uh, what do you say? Like, kind of like that what's going on in your life and so yesterday i had my camera at the training table right so i was taking pictures of the guys eating so kind of like a daily thing in my life like you know locker room i'm taking a locker room take pictures stuff like that so i'll be carrying around with me for a while yeah that's pretty cool yeah. i think that's Hopefully gonna I have be... enough space on my hard drive <laughs> yeah they do take up a lot of space yeah, yeah. um so i don't know if you're gonna be a professional photographer after mm-hmm. your football career but mm-hmm. when your football career is up you know hopefully a long way from now uh you know what are your ultimate goals uh, my brother and I talked about opening a gym, starting a little business like that, and probably being a personal trainer or something like that, and doing websites and doing photography. So I can see my like kind of like photography classes helping me right now. So just kind of doing those things, and but we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I don't know. We don't. I don't know about the future. So we'll see where it goes. <laughs> yeah. Let's take it day by day. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You have plenty of time. You don't yeah. even need to I'm, worry yeah, about. Yeah. I'm only that. 22. Yeah. <laughs> 22, not old, mm-hmm. um, but you have been here for a few years, but mm-hmm. obviously last year, you know, was a weird year with COVID and everything and wasn't a packed stadium, but now in your last year, you're going to get to have a full stadium. How excited are you for that? I'm sure you weren't, you know, you were unexpected, like if you're going to play or not. So just trying to stay uh, healthy and uh, COVID free last year was a big part of the issue and the team did a good job, of, you know, trying to keep in our own bubble. So this year, I'm excited to see everyone out. The fans that missed out last year, they get to come by, uh, come back this year. So I'm excited. And, you know, we've kind of been watching um, the band has been coming out and practicing and, like, mm-hmm. Bullet's been practicing and the paddle people. And uh, they've been out there. They'll be back on the field this year, which is going to be super exciting. So how do you feel like it's going to be, you know, obviously when you come out of the tunnel for pregame warm-ups, it's mm-hmm. a little different. But coming out and running out together with the team and then seeing the full stadium. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Everyone's been like, dang, I missed this last year. Like. <laughs> Every, we feed off the crowd, so, you know, the crowd's a big part in, you know, how we play, and, you know, they bring that energy, and so we just try to uh, do our best and just kind of keep them, keep them pumped up. And, you know, our sidelines are obviously pretty tight down mm-hmm. there. Um, have you ever had any fans, like, obviously maybe some say mean things, but anything, like, really funny that anyone's yelled or tried to get your attention and you're just like... Not, <laughs> no, not that I know of, but I always hear something, you know, guys always chuckle, but at the time I'm, like, focused in on the game plan, so I really don't, you know, kind of pay attention to that. Yeah. But I do, like, one thing I do remember is, like, kids waving at me, like, at the end of the game, like, when it's almost over, and so I always wave back and, like... I'm just like, man, this makes their day sometimes. It's like, oh, he just waved at me, Mom. So it's always it's always, uh, it's always, cute to see that. So I just, uh, like I said, I love the fans and can't wait for all of them to get back. Yeah, is that um, kind of what makes – some people might be like, man, the sidelines are so tight. Like, that's not cool. But mm-hmm. you get to really be 
right there with the fans. I mean, does mm-hmm. that make it like a little extra special? Oh yeah, it the- makes it extra special because you know you got everyone's always like, you guys got this. Like you know, it's always encouragement, and you know they always see our you know what we're drawing down. And like oh yeah, that's gonna work. <laughs> so it's like it's like the little <laughs> input like that. It's awesome, and so they just they act like they're actually in the game plan, like what we're talking about. And so it's just it's just cool for them to be that close to us. Yeah, that has to be pretty funny. Like yeah, yeah. that's gonna work. But they don't probably have any idea. Yeah, they have no idea what's happening. So. They have no idea. <laughs> Yeah. All I think is ball get ball. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being our first guest here on our new Orange Power podcast. Every week we'll have different student athletes, different coaches coming in, in-depth interviews, game previews, everything you could ever want right here in podcast form on the Orange Power podcast. So thank you so much, Malcolm. Mm-hmm. We will see you September 4th at mm-hmm. Boone Pickens Stadium. Thanks for listening and watching the Orange Power podcast.